Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about um, transformation of energy, generation of uh, electric energy in particular. Um, now, the previous lecture was about transformation of uh, kinetic energy into electric energy. Now, this lecture is about transformation of chemical energy into electric. Um, this lecture is part of, the, part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Um, the website contains prerequisite course, which is called Mass for Teens, which is, um, well, Mass is mandatory to learn physics uh, seriously. Um, so I do recommend you to know whatever is in the Mass for Teens course prior to you um, learning anything serious in physics. Um, now the course is presented on this website but at the same time all lectures are <coughs> on different um, carriers like YouTube for instance. <coughs> but I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the website from the unizor.com. First of all because every lecture has textual uh, notes uh, which basically like like a textbook. One thing is what you are um, listening to whatever uh, whatever I'm saying and another is when you are reading basically the same thing but it brings you a little bit better into the good level of understanding. Um, plus in certain cases I might present something slightly differently in writing versus um, at the board so it's always useful. Uh, also, the website contains problems um, for many topics. Everything is free, by the way, on this website. There are no advertisements, so you don't even ha you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Um, so basically, I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the website from the unizor.com. Now, back to chemical energy. So we are talking about transformation of chemical energy into electric energy. Well, first of all, let's just think about how can we transform one form of, of uh, uh, energy into another and generate, basically, electric energy. If we are generating something, we should really take it from somewhere else, right? Because there is an energy conservation. Um, now, um, it's uh, quite uh, you know, practical and natural for people to transfer, to be able to transfer one form of, 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 of energy into another. Now, in this particular case, chemical energy into electrical energy. Well, first of all, we are all familiar with transformation of chemical energy into heat, for instance. Well, a simple example is burning. When you are burning something, it's a chemical reaction of oxidation. Um, like, for instance, if you have a methane which is CH4 plus uh, oxygen from the, from the air, that's burning, basically. This is the gas, and this is the gas. They are burning. And what's the result? CO2 plus H2O. But we have to balance this thing. So uh, we probably need two of these and two of these, right? So H4 and O4 and H4 and C, right? That's the proper balance. So two molecules of oxygen plus molecule of methane gas gives you dioxide of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, vapors basically because it's heating, it's burning, right? So it's a chemical reaction and why do we have the heat released during this burning. Well, if you think about, again, again, this energy conservation, the total energy here should be greater than total energy of these molecules. And that's why we have extra energy released into heat. So the energy is basically an energy of interatomic inter bonds inside the molecule here and here. So if you will summarize somehow the 
uh, interatomic energy of this molecule and two of these molecules and then you will do exact, exactly the same here you will have this difference in energy level so these two have more energy in interatomic bonds inside the molecules than these two so that's basically why we have this excess of energy released as heat now so it should be no wonder for you that we can actually generate electricity in practically the same way from chemical energy as long as we have some chemical reaction which produces extra electrons in one hand and then we will have some kind of a result so these two electrons will will have to travel somewhere and if on another hand we will produce another chemical reaction where we will have a deficiency of electrons then by combining these two reactions we have here excess of electrons here deficiency of electrons and if we will connect them together the electrons will go and that's what electricity actually is that's what current actually happens now how did people you know kind of come up with solution to this particular problem how did they come up with the device which is called a battery that's what basically the basic the most important device which converts chemical energy into electrical is a battery now we know about batteries well first of all we have a car battery right and then we have some um, batteries which we are putting into different devices like remote control and TV and something like this these are all batteries they are different there are many different kinds of batteries but again the principle is exactly the same there is a chemical reaction on one hand which produces extra electrons and chemical reaction on another and which produces deficiency of electrons and then if we are connecting them the current will go now I will explain this on one particular example the car battery um, which is used not in electric cars I'm talking about our um, more um, uh, classical car batteries which is in many cases is so-called lead acid battery lead acid because there is a lead and there is an acid in this battery and I will talk right now about how this particular battery is arranged and how these chemical reactions are going it actually means that many many other batteries are um, constructed in a, in a similar fashion you can have different material um, we have lithium I uh, ions battery we have some kind of alkaline batteries but they're all based on the same principle people just found different chemical reactions which are producing electrons and, and consuming electrons and dif different chemical reactions uh, resulted in different uh, batteries there are better ones there are worse ones there are old ones there are new ones but in any case I will just exemplify it on one particular example all right okay so um, now I didn't mention it before battery produces direct current um, if you remember kinetic um, energy can be converted into electric depending on what kind of a device we're using um, it can be either direct or um, uh, alternate current but in in case of batteries in case of chemical reaction it's a steady stream of electrons from one place to another which means it's a direct current okay next so less it uh, lead acid battery lead acid battery basically is a reservoir filled with sulfuric acid well plus the water it's diluted sulfuric acid now there are two terminals plus and minus well you basically saw probably you saw how how car batteries are arranged there are two poles basically plus and minus what's inside you don't really see but inside in many cases there is this uh, sulfuric acid now one particular uh, terminal 
or pole, whatever, is made of lead dioxide. Another is made of lead. I'm, to I'm using chemical um, formulas for all the elements, as you see. So this is sulfuric acid, this is lead, plumbum in Latin, and this is uh, lead dioxide, plumbum O2, and this is H2SO4. SO so these are initial components of, um, of lead acid battery. That's how lead acid battery is made of. Well, obviously we are counting on certain chemical reaction on these things now. We call this minus because probably the electrons will be born here and um, it, as a result of chemical reaction between lead and uh, sulfuric acid. And electrons will have some kind of a deficiency here as a result of reaction between sulfuric acid and um, lead dioxide. So let's just think about what exactly <coughs> is happening. Okay, now, first of all, I would like to uh, talk about the sulfuric acid inside. Um, uh, by the way, it's called whatever is in between two electrodes, which is causing this particular reaction, is called electrolyte. So, it's a general, not only about sulfuric acid, it's about general um, uh, kind of a liquid usually, which is uh, not, not necessarily liquid, can be a um, hard substance as well. Um, so, what exactly is a very important property of electrolyte, which actually is causing produce the production of uh, uh, electrons in one case and deficiency of electrons in another case. Now, here is something which you will understand what I mean. Now, let's talk about the molecule of sulfuric acid. Basically, this is sulfur, this is oxygen, this is oxygen, this is oxygen and hydrogen, and this is oxygen and hydrogen. That's how it's structured. Now, these are valencial links, it's called. It's all kind of chemistry, physical chemistry, but in any case, it's all related to whatever we are talking about. So that's why this is a structural formula, uh, if you wish, or structural composition of the molecule. Now, what happens is um, H hydrogen is a very light atom. That's basically the lightest. It's, it has only one proton and one electron, which is um, circulating around it. So it's very light, it's very volatile. And in many cases, in as much as you remember we were talking about um, electrons on outer orbits of certain atoms, they are far from the nucleus and electrical uh, links between electrons and protons is not as strong as for electrons which are on a um, inner orbits. So the outer orbits are, um, they have electrons which are not as, as strongly related to protons inside the nucleus and that's why there are many electrons which are kind of floating between different atoms, changing hosts, changing their nucleus. And that's how we are talking about free electrons and especially metals, they have a lot of free electrons uh, which are just circulating and waiting for voltage to be put on one side and another side, plus and minus, and then they immediately go to the plus, right? So, in molecules, things also can happen in the same way. So, in, in atoms, we have electrons which are kind of free, uh, which are on the outer orbits, and in molecules, certain... Um, components can actually break away from the molecule. So, in this particular case, what happens, this is these two atoms of hydrogen can actually break away. Mm. 
but with an interesting property. Now, each atom of uh, hydrogen contains basically the one proton and one electrons. Now, the way how it breaks, it's not exactly like this. It's like this. And what's very important, the nucleus of hydrogen atom, which is basically one proton, goes away. But the strength of the molecule is sufficient to keep the electrons close to oxygen. Oxygen is much more uh, heavy molecule, uh, atom actually, and it, it, it holds this electron, which is in between them somewhere, it's a valence, valence electron and it actually keeps it on the side of the uh, of the oxygen so the proton of um, uh, hydrogen uh, floats away but the electron is kept on the or around the orbit of uh, of oxygen so that's why we have this only proton positively and this is two electrons which are still kept in this uh, part so this is called cations and this is called ation anion so cation and anion cations are positive and anions are negative so the molecule which is neutral is breaking basically is is broken away is broken in pieces why why is it happening? Well, it's probably some kind of a natural occurrence. But I don't know, quite frankly. <laughs> but in, in the same way as electrons are sometimes breaking away from the nucleus in the atoms and making this like a cloud of free electrons, same thing with this. Now, this whole process is called ionization because these are called I ions. Ion positive, which is cation, and negative ion, which is anion. Um, so this process of ionization is quite natural for sulfuric acid. And that's the key to understand what chemical reaction actually is happening. So let's just take this as given. Again, I don't know how to explain it, but that's how it's, it goes, basically. The ionization is happening. And that's the key to uh, chemical reaction which is occurring inside the electrolyte which is sulfuric acid okay so that's one thing now this is happening everywhere here and here and here and everywhere so we have floating um, ions uh, of uh, hydrogen positively charged and uh, negatively charged ions of um, SO4. Okay, fine. So, what's happening next? Now, now this is the key because it has actually a certain function. It actively uh, uh, goes against lead and chemical reaction actually is happening. So what kind of a chemical reaction is happening? We still have a uh, deficiency of two electrons here, okay? So what happens here? What happens is so these extra electrons are not really needed for a steady molecule because this is a steady molecule um, this is not because this is ions so it's very active there are two um, balances which are actually missing remember this o o s o o h h and these guys are missing right that's ionization so we have two free uh, links which really very actively uh, seeking who to connect to and very conveniently here is lead 
and LED sometimes has two, sometimes it has four available links, it depends. But in any case, in this case, two, length, two, two, two links of uh, LED actually goes into connection with, um, uh, with the ion of uh, SO4. And again, the connection is so strong uh, that whatever is extra just released, basically. It's just flowing. Well, not exactly flowing, because this is a reaction between um, electrolyte and lead. So where are these electrons? They are on the surface of this particular um, terminal of, of the battery, right? It, they are on the surface. Now, that surface is lead, metal, right? And it's a metal, which means it's very good um, for going uh, electricity through it, right? It's a very good conductor. Now, what happens, it has a lot of free electrons. Now, why lead has a lot of free electrons? Just think about it. Lead is a very heavy molecule, or atoms, actually, and uh, which means there are many orbits around the nucleus. The first orbit contains first level of energy contains two electrons, next one is eight, next one is eighteen, but we have a lot. So electrons are further and further from the nucleus and outer ones are really not very good um, as far as staying inside the atom. So that's why we have a lot of free electrons. So these electrons are basically going into this cloud of free electrons which are inside the um, a negative terminal and increase its electric potential. Okay, so we are increasing electric potential as this reaction actually happens. Negative potential, okay? Okay, fine, so that's done. Uh, by the way, from the structural standpoint, again, you remember that uh, I will put it again. This is our initial um, sulfuric acid. Now these two broke away and instead these two connections come to lead. So this is a structural formula of, of this. And two electrons are just flying away. But fly, uh, within, within this negative terminal, within the lead, which basically constitutes the terminal. Okay. That's done. Now pay attention to these two electrons. They're very, very important because this is basically where the source of electricity is. Okay. Meanwhile, meanwhile, what happens on the positive? So this is negative, by the way, called anode or anode, and this is cathode. Anode cathode. Okay, so on the cathode we have uh, lead, di lead dioxide, okay, and it also has chemical reaction with SO4. So what happens? We have plumbum O2, <coughs> and we still have this SO4 with two negative uh, extra electrons. And what happens? Well, what happens is, I should put equal sign, I should put an arrow here. So what happens here's I here is, we still have the same plumbum SO4 as before, but now we have two molecule, uh, two atoms of oxygen, which are basically replaced. I'm not sure which two atoms of oxygen are here, these two or these two. I just don't know, quite frankly. But it doesn't really matter. What matter is that these two electrons are still here. So it's still negatively charged. It still has two electrons. 
Now, this thing is part of the molecule of H2SO4, of sulfuric acid. So another part is this one, remember? So this is the main ionization formula. So this thing reacts with um, lead dioxide. That's how it does it. And how about this one? Okay. But that's not it. We still have 2H plus from reaction on this side because we didn't really use it here. So it's still somewhere in the electrolyte. So this ele electrolyte after this reaction has two um, uh, ions of uh, uh, hydrogen. And this reaction also it takes only this part and there are two uh, ions. So we have this plus this. And we have these guys. Uh, two of them. Now, what is this? This is 2H2O water. Two molecules of water. So we have four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. However, what's very, very important, let's count the electrons. This is, each atom has one missing electron, two atoms have two missing electrons, and this guy has two missing electrons, right? So that's four. Two of them are provided, but two are still missing, which means two are still missing here. Well, actually, I should say, since I have two molecules, so one of them is, one of them has one electron missing, and another has another electron missing. So, on this side, we have electrons, two electrons missing, and on this side, it's on the surface somewhere, again. The concentration of these uh, missing uh, I, uh, molecules of water with missing electrons somewhere is on, on the surface of, of this electrode. And these two are extra. So what happens now? If there is no connection between them, well, reaction goes and goes. This accumulates negative, this accumulates positive, up until a certain extent when this thing doesn't really take anymore. Because the electrons which are already here prevent new electrons to come into this. So this reaction is probably somehow changing in a way that these extra electrons, after this is completely charged, these electrons are no longer goes into this, so they're somehow probably neutralized whatever the reaction is. And reaction goes no more, basically. Just generally speaking. Um, again, the whole thing is actually much simpler than what's really happening. I'm pretty sure it's much more complicated picture. However, as a, as a, as a good model, it, it really re reflects what's going on. So, the battery is charged up to a certain extent. Now, what happens then? Well, what happens then, if I connect these two things, let's say with a lamp, or electric motor or something like this. Well, in case of car battery, we have, when this thing is actually working, when we start the engine, right? Because the car engine is in, uh, in, in, in a standing still position, it's not really working. Uh, so we have to really start working to pump gas, to start ignition and stuff like this. So that's what the battery actually is, is needed. In the very beginning, we turn on the car, which means we turn on this connection. And then it goes into some kind of an electric motor, which rotates the, uh, the whole car engine and ignites the, uh, the gas, uh, ignites the gas. 
and uh, that's how the car internal combustion engine starts working. Okay, so at that time all these electrons, which are excess of electrons, are going into um, cathode from anode to cathode and that's how electric current is. As soon as number of electrons here diminishes the, the, the reactions start again. So it goes and goes and goes well and you know that initially you have certain you know amount of uh, sulfuric acid which reacts with these two things and um, if you don't really do anything it will basically completely exhaust the power of um, sulfuric acid and uh, there will be no more electricity the car is dead right so that's why this particular battery has a property of not being discharged like this but also being charged now we are not talking about this in this particular lecture because it's not really the, you see the lecture is uh, dedicated to generation of electricity now when we are charging the the battery um, we are converting electric power into chemical and that's kind of outside of this lecture but basically I, I'm just telling you that if instead of a lamp you have really a source of electricity like generator and in the cars in the internal combustion cars you have alternator which converts kinetic energy into electric right and then if you uh, put the uh, electric potential negative here and positive here all reactions will go in reverse and again let's not talk about why it happens but it, it happens and we have uh, sulfuric acid restored basically from from these um, sulfur uh, lead sulfide I think it's called so from lead sulfide and water uh, under the uh, potential of electric um, energy applied to these terminals reactions go in reverse and in the textual part of this lecture I actually have a nice picture which basically kind of reflects what's going on in case when you're charging and discharging uh, this uh, lead acid battery so the whole thing actually goes like this um, you have plumbum, uh, you have plumbum O2 plus S2 SO4 plus plumbum. So this is plus, this is minus. That's in the beginning. And at the end, you have lead sulfide plus water plus lead sulfide again. So this is again, this is plus, this is minus. Now when you are discharging battery, it goes this way. This is discharge. Right? And when you're charging, it goes this way. So I have this nice picture, um, more or less like this, uh, in the textual part, in the notes for this lecture on, on, on unizor.com. Okay, what did I miss? Well, actually nothing. I think everything is fine. Um, let me just finish this lecture by saying that, well, whatever I was just talking about I believe it's a simplified view on what's going on inside the battery batteries are complex really and chemical reactions are complex whatever I was just talking about is a simplified view uh, now there are many characteristics of the battery which, has, which are very very important um, not only the amount of energy it can produce but also how smooth the process is, how stable um, the voltage produced by these two uh, terminals is. Because sometimes 
you see with diminishing um, amount of uh, sulfuric acid here you would expect that the voltage will go down but don't we know that in the car battery we usually have 12 volts so there is something which we have to really take care of and I'm not sure myself how it's basically done but it's complex how to make a battery which establishes the relatively steady um, voltage on its terminals um, how make the battery um, more capable of producing um, electricity because this thing is well I don't know if you know but a car battery is heavy well because of lead here and here and, and uh, sulfuric acid um, so we probably can think about how to make our batteries lighter but producing the same kind of electricity so the whole industry of producing batteries is really very very intense especially right now with electric cars um, so I think in electric cars they're using lithium ions which again it's some kind of a way of producing uh, electricity from the from the chemical energy um, so there are better ways and there are different ways and there are more stable ways etc it's a very interesting uh, part and um, definitely deserves a lot of research which is being done obviously right now um, every um, every year or something you have some kind of a new information okay we have a new way how to produce electricity in a battery and the battery becomes lighter the battery becomes more become more capable of producing uh, electricity so um, more productivity if you wish so all that is very important but my purpose was to exemplify creation of ele generation of electricity from the chemical energy so from the energy of interatomic uh, links within the molecule we are producing electricity because the new chemical composition which is a result of chemical reaction has less inside uh, energy less interatomic uh, energy inside the molecules than the original so that's how this chemical reaction produces some energy and in this case the energy which we are producing is electric energy in some other it's heat as I was explaining in the beginning but in this case it's, elect it's, it's electrons basically okay so I do recommend you to read uh, the notes for this lecture on unizor.com there are some nice pictures especially the, the very last one which basically exemplifies the whole thing at li like, like this um, so that's it thank you very much and good luck <laughs>